In this video, I'm going to go over the things that I've learned over the past years on how to configure your Plex server to make it work for you. Specifically as it relates to managing files and getting things to appear in Plex and run the way they should. As you can see in the top left hand corner, this is your home screen. So anytime you click on Plex or home, it's going to bring you back to showing your menu on the left side and then the movies, of course, related to those on the right side. But just realize that if you rearrange the order of the list on the left side, it will change what's on the right side. To rearrange the item, simply go to the column in the left hand side, hold your mouse over any of the items, and then you'll get these three dots. Then you click on the three dots, and then you can navigate over to reorder. When you click reorder, it will give you the option then to move each of these items up or down in the list. So as I drag Movies Animated down to the bottom, the Movies PG comes up to the top. And then if I pull it back, it comes back to the top. You'll notice as I do that on the left hand column, the items on the right hand column move. So you can organize what you see on the right hand side by the way things are organized on the left hand side. When you're done organizing them, click the X and it will go back to normal. At this point, you should realize that Plex catalogs your movies that are in folders on the computer. So wherever your directories are and the folders, it will go in, look at those movies by name, and then it will catalog them in the Plex system. But you have to have things just right, or it might not be able to identify which movie is in the folder. These tips and tricks will help it to identify them every time. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is you want to go into your settings in your Plex server. You'll want to navigate down on the left hand side to the section called library, click on library, and then you'll want to check the box that says run a partial scan when changes are detected. You can also check the box scan my library automatically and this will do everything but at least this one run a partial scan so that when you update the files in the directory it will automatically scan. Now I will say up front it doesn't always work up in the beginning but as time goes on it will get better about detecting that you've made changes and go in and make the updates to your system. Even if it doesn't work the way it's supposed to, I'll show you what to click so that things refresh without it doing it automatically. Now, scroll down and click Save Changes. Okay, let's take a look at my system. You'll notice here that on the left-hand side, I've selected Movies PG-16. And in these movies, my system has already scanned all the directories, has identified the movies that it can identify, and has put cover art and metadata, all the information in. But you'll notice here on the right hand side that there is a movie and this movie does not have the cover art and the date so you can tell that it has not been able to identify what that movie is so to help the system to be able to identify in the future what this movie is these are the steps that you need to take now you can do this in different ways but this is the best way because if you do it other ways, if you ever have to replace the file or change it or something happens to your system, it will have to try to identify it again and it will be back to the same spot. But if you do the steps that I'm telling you, it will be able to identify it every time. First, if you hover your mouse over the actual movie, you'll get this look with an option on the bottom left and the bottom right. Now click the little pencil on the bottom left once you have a lot of movies on your server, it'll sometimes be difficult to locate where the movie is actually located. By clicking on this option and clicking on info on the bottom left hand corner, it will show you the directory where the movie is located. Now you want to go and locate the actual directory on the computer where that file for that movie is located. And here it is. Now that you have the name of the movie, go in Google and type the name of the movie. As you do the search, usually right below, you will see the name of the movie as it's correctly spelled, along with the date that the movie was originally released. Make a note of the name of the movie and the date it was released and return back to the directory containing the movie. I can't emphasize this enough. If Plex cannot identify the movie, you need to give it this information as part of the file name. So after you identify the name, correct spelling and all, and the date of the release of that movie, you'll go in and you will change the name of the movie file to have the correct spelling and full name of the movie, as well as, in parentheses, put the date the movie was released. Now this is where the system should automatically go in and update the movie information and cover because we've made that change in the settings to automatically scan. But if it doesn't, you simply go over to the left hand side to the directory listing on the left where the three dots are, click that and click on 
scan library files and it will automatically go in and check it, notice the changes, match it with the movie and update the information. This is the most common reason why Plex cannot match the movie with the file. If you give it the correct spelling and the release date in the file name, it should be able to do it about 99% of the time. But there is another case, and I'll show you here in another example, where it was able to identify the movie, but it doesn't update the actual image on the front of the movie. Here in the movie Sabrina, you can see below the name, it has the date. That tells you that it has identified the movie. Also, if you go and hover over the actual movie and click on the button for the pencil there, it will go into the settings. And if you look at the information listed with the movie, you can also see that it has more information filled out. So it has identified the movie, but it doesn't have a cover. This is what you do. On the edit screen, click on the left-hand side on poster. This shows you which images are available to select as a movie cover. Notice that there's not one of the originals there. Now, open up your browser and open another tab. Type the name of the movie. Most movies will look the same way and you'll see the information about the movie and the date of the release. You can then click on the actual picture of the movie. Here you have a couple options. You can right click on the image and select copy image address, then return back over to Plex and under the poster settings, you can select enter a URL. It will then load the picture into Plex so that you can save it. Now this is quick if you have only a couple that you need to fix. But if you have a lot and want to not have to do this again, you can always copy the image to the directory with the movie. To do this, just return to the image, right click on the image and click save image as. Place it in the directory where the movie file is with the exact same name. It won't overwrite because this is an image file. Then the system is automatically designed to look if there is an image file that matches the name of the movie to place that image as the cover. Now, just like before, you'll need the system to scan. So go over and click the three dots, click scan library, and it will automatically update the image to match. So let's take a look at a more complicated one where I have a whole series, The Hunger Games. As you can see here, a couple have the actual images and the, the data is there, but the others do not. So this is what you do. I will hover my mouse over top of one of the images so that I can get the options and I will select the pencil. I click on the info section so I can find the directory where it's located. You'll notice that my naming convention doesn't meet those standards that I set before. They need to have the actual name of the movie along with the dates of the release. So I go back out to Google, I search for the Hunger Games, I get the dates for the release and the names and I update all the files to have the correct name of the movie as well as their release dates in parentheses. I then go back to the menu on the left, click on the three dots for that directory and click scan library files. The system then goes out, checks these against the name and their database and updates them so that they're all correct and have the correct image now listed for those movies. Here's another helpful tip. If you have something showing up and it looks correct, but you want it to go and scan again and maybe help it identify which movie or information it needs, you can go and hover your mouse over top of the image and then click the three little dots. And on that side, you can get match in the menu. It will then go out and say, these are the movies I most match with this movie. You can then, if it is correct, you can select that and it will then fill in the information. Now for my last tip, if you have more than one movie that you want grouped together, but because it's sorted alphabetically, they're not placed together. Sometimes series, they change the name enough to where it doesn't line up alphabetically. There's a way to go in and to change the sort order for just those movies. To do this, simply hover over it and click on the pencil. You'll notice that there is the title and also the sort title. Even though the title that's displayed is the first one, the second one is the title name that it's using to sort. If you change the name of this movie and the other movie to be something that are alphabetically compatible, it will then put them in order. In this case, I changed the sort title for Kronk's New Groove to be Emperor's New Groove 2. As soon as I save these changes, the two movies come together because their sort titles now align with each other in alphabetical order. 
you'll notice that it has a orange lock because you made a specific change to this, it tries to keep the database from overriding things that you change. You can always click that and still change it. I hope these tips help you as much as they've helped me. If you enjoyed this content, make sure you like and subscribe.